They say eyes are the windows to the soul, so better make those windows beautiful. Today we'll learn how to add creative details to the eyes and add dimension to our souls. These details are not real. It's like wearing creative contact lenses. It's a creative choice. So is almost everything in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do is to create the details. For that, let's create our favorite adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now take it all the way up like Fat Joe. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. This inverts the mask and makes everything black. Remember, black hides and white shows and that is why any change we do here is not visible there unless we paint something. With the mask selected, select the brush and here's the secret. I have an awesome brush for you that you can download using the link in the description. Last evening, I had nothing better to do so I had this idea of creating these iris brushes. So check it out. To install the brush, click on the drop down right here, click on the gear icon and then import brushes. Select the downloaded brush file and click on open. And there you have your Pix iris brush. Now you're not able to see how the brush is shaped. So click on the gear again and choose brush tip that way you'll also be able to see the tip of the brush, which is most important here. Now you can already guess where we are going with this, but trust me, it's a bit more creative. With this iris brush selected, select the mask right here, just zoom in. Let's do one eye right now. Zoom in, size the brush, make it smaller like so, and you can size it exactly as the size of the iris. To do this on Windows, you can hold the Alt key, the right mouse button, and drag it to the right to make it larger, drag it to the left to make it smaller. On Mac, however, Hold the control key and the option key and then click and drag. It does the same thing. So just dab right here and you're done. Have a look at the details. It's incredible, isn't it? So here's the before and here is the after. Keep in mind, we are just getting started. Now brightening is not only the part of the puzzle. You need both hands to clap. So with this curves adjustment layer selected, press control or command J. Let's say the top one is for the highlights and the bottom one is for the shadows or the dark areas, whatever you want to name it. Now in this mask, we want to darken the opposite areas. So with the mask selected, we need to invert it. Press Ctrl or Command I to invert. But right now it's just brightening everything. Why? Because have a look, both of the curves are the same. So with the shadows, we need to just take it down like so. Now have a look at the details. It's crazy, crazy good. But right now the darkness is all over the place. All it takes is a little bit of hope. In Photoshop, a group mask. So with the shadow layer selected, hold the controller command, select the highlights layer. Both of them are now selected. Now press control or command G. Now you can have a mask for this group. So hold the Alt key or the option key and then click on the mask button. This creates a black negative mask. Now you can take the brush. Let us take a regular soft round brush and let's just paint right here. That's all with white. You want to make sure opacity and flow both are at 100. See the details. This is crazy, crazy good. You can even choose to erase the highlights from the corners. So if you open up this group, let's open up the highlights mask, select that and set the foreground color to black. By the way, if the foreground color and the background colors are just something else, you can always press D to set them to defaults, white and black, and press X to toggle between the foreground and the background colors. Let's take it away from the corners. Now this is nice. Now let's get back to this mask right here and then take it away from the extra areas like these. Now it looks fantastic right now, right? Here's the overall before and here is the after. But the only problem is it darkens the pupil way too much. So with the shadows mask, select that, black as the foreground color and take it away from that particular area. That's all. Let us not forget organization is important. So double click here. Let's name this eye details and you can close the group. At this point, I recommend taking a break and then getting back and maybe you can get more creative as well. For example, you can also consider changing the colors of the highlights and shadows. For instance, if I double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer, curves open, inside of the curves, you can play with other channels. For example, let's go to the blue channel and you can take it down to make it more yellow. Why? Because blue is the opposite of yellow. Let's take it even further like so. Let's go to the green channel and take that down as well to create a warm feel. You can do the same with the shadows. Maybe try a different color. 
up to you. Next, we need to create the kicker light and add some depth. When light enters the eye, it creates a catch light at the entry point. While a lot of it goes inside the pupil, some of it also hits the opposite side of the iris. And this, my friend, is the kicker light that gives the eye its incredible shine. To create the kicker light, just above this group, let us create one more, our favorite, the Curves Adjustment Layer. Take it up again, like so. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. You can take the brush, a soft round brush, and just dab with white on the opposite side, like so. And then you can also create some corners here, like that, to add some additional shine. And this creates a brilliant effect. You can paint even more. So I'm going to go a little bit here, like so, and paint a little more around the corners. Now, sometimes it may be too much in the center, so you can take that away as well. Press X, foreground color is black, and let's take it away from the center, like so. Now we are getting into the depths of the eye. I believe we can go back here and maybe even increase the shadows a bit more to create an additional depth. Fantastic, isn't it? You can also experiment with Blend If with this, but let's save that for later. Right now, let's create some depth for it. First of all, name this Kicker Light, and then we are going to create our favorite one more time, and many more times, Curves. Just take it down this time, slightly, like so. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, and with a soft brush, just outline this. That's all. Make sure the foreground color is white. This creates a wonderful feel. Now, you may be doing extra, so let's erase the extras. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background color, and then erase the extras. Now, sometimes this may be too much, so you may need to adjust it ever so slightly, like so. Want to have a look at the overall before and after? So here's the before, and oh my gosh, here is the after. Now I know it's over the top, but wait for it. We're going to meet our best friend later. Now it is time for us to create some shiny highlights. For it, again, let's pick our favorite curves. I love it. In and out of Photoshop. This time again, just take it up. And we are trying to create those highlights around the edges. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, and just paint with white, like so. Don't focus on the inside, just focus on the edges. We're going to remove the insides easily later. See, it's looking like something from space. This is amazing. And add an extreme highlight here, like so. Just look at this. Create that ring. Now we need to remove it from the dark areas. For it, double click on the right hand side of this layer. This opens up the layer style dialog box. Inside of that, we need to take it away from the dark areas of this layer. And where is this layer? It's under this layer. So we need to play with the sliders of underlying layer. And we need to take it away from the dark areas, like so. See, it's going away from the dark areas, but this is harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart, make the transition smoother, and take it away like so. Now this is really, really nice. Let's keep it this way. This is fantastic. Hit OK. Now, if the catch lights in your eye is not that bright, you can create one more highlights layer to brighten up the catch lights. But it's not really required here. Let's name this Highlights. Want to have a look at the overall before and after? So here is the before. And here is the after. Crazy. Now it is time for you to meet your best friend. Our best friend. Or as Gen Z likes to say, bestie. And that is Opacity. So select the topmost layer. Hold the Shift key. Select the bottom most layer, press Ctrl or Command G. Let's zoom out. Of course, this is way too much. Unless you're trying to create something very creative, let's decrease the opacity. For this image, let's keep it at about 66. Now, I know this is over the top, but it looks fantastic. Now, do we need to create it again for the other eye? Yes and no, but not exactly. We can actually copy this and then make some adjustments for the other eye. Since eyes are never exactly symmetrical. And even if they were, the lights and angles come into play. So let's name this right eye, her left eye actually, and then press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of that. Now it is too much, but select the move tool right here and just move it to the other eye, like so. Now you can press Ctrl or Command T as well. And I guess this fits pretty nice. Only one problem, there's a leak. So let's open up this group, select the mask right here for the eye details, take the brush, black as the foreground color, remove the extras, not a big deal. Similarly, from inside of the eyes, gone, perfect. There we go, pretty darn fantastic. 
Now, if I were actually doing this, I would rotate this just a little bit so it's not exactly the same. Do not forget to name things. And this is left eye. So here's the overall before and here is the after. Let's zoom out and see. Here is the overall before and here is the after. Now, of course, this is higher opacity. You can even go lower if you wish to. I hope you liked it. Be sure to check out PixImperfect Pro at PixImperfect.com to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond. Also, as a pro member, you'll have access to all of these iris brushes and more. Just last week, I released some pro skin retouching actions that are just apply and go. We have over 110 lessons, 342 practice projects, assets, actions, and stuff like this. And all of it is constantly growing. Whether you're just starting out with Photoshop or have been using it for a while, you'll find immense value in these courses plus you get a super friendly customer support check out pix imperfect pro only on piximperfect.com time for us to do a little bit of recap first we created the details using this iris brush we dabbed once for the highlights and we also created the shadows then we created the kicker light which is opposite to the catch light so if the catch light is right here the kicker light will be here and we created that after that we darkened the edges to add some depth before after. And finally, we created those extreme highlights where we used blend if, before, after. Now, of course, as humans, we tend to go overboard. So decreased the overall opacity to something like 66. You can go even lower and copied the same thing to the other eye. That's it. So that's it for this video. I hope this one helped. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.